Hey everybody, Johnny here. This is part one of a series looking at the new Accumulate Field node that I just got added into Blender. I've been working on this one for a few months and I'm pretty excited that I finally got to commit it. I wanted to take you through a small project to see some of the things you can do with this new node. So let's get into it. So for this one, we're gonna be using Blender 3.1 Alpha as of December 30th, 2021. We'll start by adding a node tree to the default cube. And for this project, we're just gonna go ahead and delete the group input. To keep things simple, we're gonna instance a cube along a mesh line. That'll give us an easy way to create a basic amount of points. So I'm gonna add a mesh primitive cube, a mesh primitive line, and an instance on points node. I'll connect the instances to the geometry, the mesh line to the points, and the cube to the instance. Immediately, that gives us a stack of 10 boxes. We can affect this just using the count number on the mesh line. Now these cubes stack up really nicely because the size of our mesh primitive cube is one meter square and our mesh line has an offset of one meter. If I were to change the offset of the mesh line a little bit, you'd see they no longer stack. In order to show what this tutorial is actually doing, I'm gonna leave this mesh line off of a one meter offset. You don't have to change this setting. You can leave it at one if you'd like. Now to reset these with a new Z height for each box, we're gonna use the new accumulate node. The accumulate node is found under utilities accumulate field. We're gonna use the accumulation to set the position of each box. So to give each point of this mesh line a new position, I'll use a set position node. Now for this example, I only want to change the Z position of these boxes, not the entire vector of their position. So to do that, I'm gonna to need to use a combine XYZ node. A relatively new feature in geometry nodes is the socket drag search functionality. If I drag out from this position socket and release, I get a menu. I'm looking for a combine XYZ node. So if I type in combine, we see that we have combine XYZ and I wanna plug into the vector socket. This works for both incoming and outgoing sockets. Since our stack of boxes is gonna be lined up with the 0, 0, XY coordinate for our object, we're not gonna worry about those right now. We're just gonna worry about the Z coordinate. You'll see that the accumulate field node has three outputs, leading, trailing, and total. As the accumulate field node adds up values, it's either going to start at zero or at the first value added. If we want our list of values to start at the first value, we use leading. If we want our list to start at zero, we use trailing. So here I'll plug leading into the Z. As we can see, this first box is now centered at one because the value we're accumulating currently is one. So at index zero, the value is one, then two, then three. If I plug this into trailing, you'll see that the first box is now centered around zero. The second is at one, the third is at two. Since the origin of our cube is at the middle of the cube, we wanna split the difference. So that can easily be done with our accumulate field and a couple of math nodes. We wanna take the average of the leading and trailing values. That will give us the center value for each position. To average these two, all I need to do is add them together and divide by two. So I'll add a math node and add together leading and trailing. I'll duplicate this math node, set it to divide and divide by two. Now you can see that this first box is centered around the 0.5 mark, the second is at 1.5, etc. And now these are stacked up nicely starting at the bottom. To keep this a little cleaner, I'm going to grab these two, press Ctrl G, tab back out, and rename this node group to average. This would be a good node group to save in a file and later use as an asset. At this point, we've pretty much gotten back to where we started, although instead of our first box being centered around zero, it's centered around 0.5. Now since the value input of our accumulate field node is a field, we don't have to have a static value coming in. So to make this a bit more interesting, I'm gonna add a random value node. And then I'll plug the value into the accumulate fields value input. You can see here that the boxes have all crammed down into each other now. The reason for this is although we've changed the position of the boxes, we haven't changed the size of the boxes. 
since our boxes are centered around the average point for each field accumulation, and our initial boxes were a size of 1, we can scale the boxes by the same value that we have coming into our accumulate And as you can see here, our boxes are now properly spaced. We can adjust the minimum and maximum size of our boxes by using the random value sliders. So if the smallest box should be 0.5 and the largest should be 0.9, we can put in those values and get our stack of boxes. We can always add or subtract boxes from the pile by opening up our mesh line node and changing the count. If we'd like a different random stack of boxes, we can simply adjust the seed. Let's go ahead and re-add our group input. And let's connect up a few of these values to our modifier. We'll connect up the box count, the minimum and maximum box size, and the seed. Now we can control these values straight from our modifier. And if we were to duplicate our pile, since we made a completely reusable node tree, we can change the settings for that pile and not affect the first pile. So now you have four separate stacks of boxes, and each one has its own settings. In the next part of this video, we're going to take a look at how we can achieve a similar effect in one node tree using the group index feature of our accumulate field. That's all for this video, but make sure to check out the next one as we continue on with this project. Thanks for watching, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.